In this contest, just as it once happened to Jacob, Our Lady and Queen was asked, what was her name? And she said, I am a daughter of Adam, formed by thy hands from the insignificant dust. And the Most High answered, Henceforth thou shalt be called, chosen for the mother of the only begotten. But the latter part of this name was heard only by the courtiers of heaven, while to her it was as yet hidden until the proper time. She therefore heard only the word chosen. Having thus protracted this amorous contention according to the disposition of his divine wisdom, and as far as served to inflame the heart of this elected one, the whole blessed trinity gave to Mary, our most pure queen, the explicit promise that they would now send into the world the eternal word made man. Filled with incomparable joy and exaltation by this fiat, she asked and received the benediction of the Most High. Thus this strong woman issued forth from the contest with God more victorious than Jacob, for she came out rich, strong, and laden with spoils, and the one that was wounded and weakened to speak in our way was God himself, for he was drawn by the love of this lady to clothe himself in that sacred bridal chamber of her womb with the weakness of our passable nature. He disguised and enveloped the strength of his divinity so as to conquer, in allowing himself to be conquered and in order to give us life by his death. Let the mortals see and acknowledge how most holy Mary, next to her most blessed son, is the cause of their salvation. During this vision were also revealed to this great queen the works of the fifth day of the creation in the manner in which they happened. She saw how, by the force of the divine command, were engendered and produced in the waters beneath the firmament the imperfect reptiles which creep upon the earth, the winged animals that course through the air, and the finny tribes that glide through the watery regions. Of all these creatures she knew the beginnings, the substance, the form and figure according to their kinds. She knew all the species of the animals that inhabit the fields and woods, their conditions, peculiarities, their uses and connections. She knew the birds of heaven, for so we call the atmosphere, with the varied forms of each kind, their ornaments, feathers, their lightness, the innumerable fishes of the seas and the rivers, the differences between the whales, their forms, composition, and qualities, their caverns and the foods furnished them by the sea, the ends which they serve, the use to which they can be put in the world. And His Majesty especially commanded all these hosts of creatures to recognize and obey Most Holy Mary, giving her the power to command all of them, as it happened on many occasions, to be mentioned later on number 185, 431, and 636. Therewith she issued from the trance of this day, and she occupied herself during the rest of it in the exercises and petitions which the Most High had pointed out to her. Instruction which the Heavenly Lady gave me my daughter, the most complete knowledge of the wonderful operations of the arm of the Almighty in raising me during the abstractive visions of the divinity to the dignity of mother is reserved for the predestined when they shall come to know them in the heavenly Jerusalem. There they shall understand and see them in the Lord himself and with that special delight and astonishment which the angels experienced when the Most High revealed these things to them for his exaltation and praise. And since his majesty has shown himself so lovingly generous toward thee, giving thee in preference to all the generations of men such great knowledge and light concerning these so hidden sacraments, I desire, my friend, that thou signalize thyself above all creatures in praising and magnifying his holy name for the works of his powerful arm in my regard. 
At the same time, thou must strive with all thy power to imitate me in the works which I performed by the aid of these great and wonderful blessings. Pray and sigh for the eternal salvation of thy brethren, and that the name of my son may be extolled by all and known to the whole world. Thou must establish the habit of this kind of prayer by constant resolve founded upon firm faith and unshaken confidence, and by never losing sight of thy misery in profound humility and self-abasement. Thus prepared, thou must battle with the divine love for the good of thy people, firmly convinced that the most glorious triumphs of divine love may especially be looked for in its dealings with the humble who love God in uprightness. Raise thyself above thyself and give him things for the special blessings conferred upon thee and for those conferred upon the human race. Transformed by this divine love, thou wilt merit other gifts, both for thyself and for thy brethren. And whenever thou findest thyself in his divine presence, do thou ask for his benediction.